Thanks everybody for joining this session. In this session, we're going to discuss the underground raceway cable system and its thermal analysis. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Yi Chen Bi. I'm the senior electrical engineer at ETAP. I'm also the product manager of the underground raceway module. At ETAP, my major responsibility here is to maintain, design, and test several ETAP products including the underground raceway system and other cable-related modules. This presentation will cover several topics. Firstly, we will look at several industry challenges which engineers are facing when designing underground cable system. Secondly, I will introduce how ETAP solutions can help engineers to overcome such difficulties. Finally, I will use a simple example to demonstrate the benefits and values of the ETAP underground raceway modules. In the world of underground raceway design and the cable system design, the industry has been facing multiple challenges, which I would like to highlight some here. The first challenge is also the most important reason why engineers seek to use the detailed thermal model to perform the temperature calculation. In the real world, there exists a lot of different cable structure and cable materials. Also, cable manufacturers keep designing new sizing standards to cover all possible cable types. Generally, major cable sizing standards like the NEC, IEC standard, they tend to categorize cable into several types and provide cable opacity based on the cable size and the cable insulation types. However, this approach ignores the effect of other cable structures like the sheath, armor, jacket, and eventually it will compromise the cable sizing accuracy. The second challenge is to design cable system and the size cable when complex and the multiple raceway configuration involved. Generally, common cable sizing standard can handle only one raceway or limited number of cable groups when size cable. However, actual cable system especially for the medium and the high voltage cable system. A lot of cables or several traceways can run in parallel, which means that the standard cannot handle such cases and the computer modeling is a must. The last challenge comes from the renewable project like the PV farm or end farm. Because of the nature of the renewable energy, the power generation and its corresponding cable loading is highly fluctuating and cycling, which makes its cable sizing quite difficult to be performed by using the steady state calculations. Now, let's look at these challenges a little bit in details. For the cables in the low voltage application, engineers generally consider only the cable size when perform the cable derating. Other cable structures like the sheath, armor, jacket are ignored. This is accurate enough because other structures do not significantly affect the cable temperature. However, for medium and high voltage cable application, their effect will be deserved to be included. As a typical approach, we generally divide the cable into every single layers and set up the thermal model for each. More specifically, we should consider the thermal resistance of non-metallic layers like the insulation, favor, bedding jacket, and also consider the heat generated by the metallic layers like the conductors, armor, and sheaths. As we can see, the complexity of the cable structure and the large difference between the cable materials will require computer-aided modeling and software, and that is why ETAP can help to make it simple. Before the software, Traditionally, engineers use the cable sizing standard to perform the cable sizing and derated calculation. Generally, the sizing standard provides cable base opacity based on the cable size and derated factor for different configurations and different environment. However, this standard cannot enumerate and exhaust all possible configurations. For example, the NEC only provides the base opacity for cable rated in 60, 75, and 90 degrees C, and also for only limited insulation types. It means that for other type of cables, engineers may have to use the values from the similar materials. Another drawback of the standard, the engineers must assume all cables are in the same size, 
and carrying the same amount of current, which may not be practical in most applications. And also, NEC and other standards cannot consider the installation configurations of multiple duct banks and also direct buried cables. A new challenge, which we may see more and more often in recent years, is actually comes from the distributed and renewable energy resources. Before, the transient temperature calculation was not that popular. However, recently more and more engineers start to use this tool due to the nature of the renewable energy, the power generation, and also corresponding cable loading is highly fluctuating and cycling. Take the solar farm as an example. The cable loading is almost zero during the night and continuously increase. It eventually reached the peak in the afternoon. If we look at the graph, we can notice that there exists a time delay between the cable loading change and the temperature change. When the temperature reaches its peak, the cable loading already approaches to zero. Because of all these facts, sizing the cable based on one constant peak current will generally lead to the overestimating and the cost more than enough. Before we use a computer to aid the calculation, engineers propose different methods to estimate the average cable loading and also use the load factor to represent the fluctuating procedure. But since we have the transcendent temperature calculation tool, we can simply enter the cable loading profile at different time point and have the software to predict the actual temperature profile at any time. As ETAPS attempts to solve the above mentioned challenges, ETAP provides an integrated graphic software package, which includes multiple calculation tools to help the engineers to solve problems in different applications and scenarios. ETAP provides a graphic user interface allowing users to draw the raceway, cable, and other elements based on the actual design, and the presentation annotation is ready to be printed for the report purpose. Also, ETAP carefully designed a comprehensive cable library structure, which allows the user to define most modern cable structures and the materials. Besides the capability of the user-defined cable library, ETAP program provides about 700 predefined cable library, which cover most modern cable types, different KV level, and also from major manufacturers. And this number is still increasing. ETAP underground raceway module provides a traditional steady state calculation to solve the temperature calculation for multiple cables, multiple raceways in both duct bank and direct barrier installations. We also provide automatic capacity calculation to help the engineers to find the maximum allowable current for entire cable system under current configurations. Cable sizing tool is also helping to pick the minimum required cable size. And finally, the transient temperature calculation can provide temperature distribution based on the cable loading profile. At last, I would like to discuss four major values ETAP can bring to our engineers and users. With the integrated graphic presentation and ETAP's automatic rule-based raceway design, engineers can set up raceway system more efficiently. ETAP can provide system-wide cable derating and sizing for large complex cable system. And also the program can predict the fluctuating cable temperature based on the cable loading profile. The last, but it's also critical for large system, the software and the program model is more convenient for digital store and management, which is critical for future project expansion and the review. Now, I would like to use a simple example to demonstrate how to use underground raceway system in ETA. Generally, when we do the underground raceway system design, the first step is to determine the soil environment. In ETAP, it is quite simple to do that. We can just simply enter the soil information, like the soil resistivity and the soil types into the editors. And also, we can define the soil ambient temperature into the program. The second step is to create a raceway into the presentations. There are a bunch of ways to do that in ETAP. 
The most intuitive way would be simply dropping a new raceway into the presentation and then dropping several new conduit side by side into this rectangular raceway. However, there are several other ways to do it to make it simple. Uh, if the raceway is the uniform, we can use the ETA provided uniform tool to automate it, uh, generate the raceway in single time. As we can see, we can simply define the raceway dimensions in X and the Y, and also define how many conduit in rows and columns. Besides that, we can also define the type of the conduits, the size of the conduit. After which we finish this part, we can simply click OK and drop in the new raceway into the presentations. So in other cases, we may have some special raceway where the conduit may not share the same size. In that case, we can use the non-uniform method or circuit level method. For example, if I use a non-uniform method, I can simply define how many levels or how many rows in my raceway. I can also define the trace size of, of the conduit in the each row and the type of the conduit in the each rows. And after we finish that, we can also click OK. And once we've done that, the presentation and the program will automatically drop in this uh, non-uniform raceway based on the rule book we set. After we drop in the new raceway, the next step would be dropping a new cable or pull the new cable into the presentations. We can simply drop in the new cables to the conduit. And after we've done that, we can click the cable and check its physical page. In this page, there are a bunch of uh, dimensions parameters to control the parameters of the cable. Uh, for example, you want to maybe define if the cable is grounded or not, like this one, and also if the cable has the jacket or not, and what is the insulation type for this cable. You can specify all those parameters based on your manufactured data sheet. However, if you do not want to do that manually, you can simply go to the cable library, and in each app, we provide more than 600 default library to be selected. So you can always find a library which is matching with your design. So in this case, I just simply pick any of the cable and then select the size from the library. And then we can just click OK, and this cable will be automatically dropping into the raceway. OK, so suppose I already have a raceway uh, design in the, in the presentations. At this moment, if I say I wanted to know what is the, my operating temperature rise based on my current raceway configurations, based, my, based on my current cable operating loading, how can I do that? So with that, I can just simply run the steady state calculation. After we run that, we can see a bunch of the results are presented onto the, onto the raceway and onto the presentations. It simply means that based on the current loading, operating loading, based on current configuration of the raceway, and based on the current environment, like the soil ambient temperature, I'm able to see the temperature rise on each individual cables. For example, on a cable two, if the cable two loading is 242 amps, the temperature will be 73 degree. So see, I do not want to know the operating temperature for my system. However, I wanted to know what is the maximum allowable opacity for my cable system for my current configurations. In order to know that such information, I'm able to run several calculation. Uh, we have a uniform opacity calculation and also uniform temperature opacity calculation. Let's just run through them. Uh, once I've done that, I'm able to see that based on the current configuration, if I wanted to say, uh, if the cable two reaches the 286 amps, the cable two temperature will reach 90 degrees. So basically this calculation will tell you how much current can be allowed in each individual cables. And with that cables on my system will be eventually reaches the allowable temperature, which is the 90 degree in this case. Remembering we were discussed about the transient temperature calculation in my previous slide. Uh, so in this case, we want to take a look at that. For example, 
I see cable two maybe uh, run into that case, and this cable is going to cover and carry the operating loading from the solar farm. So in order to model that case, uh, I can simply go to check the mode file, go to the loading page. I'm able to see the trends in the mode profile here. So for this case, if this cable is coming from the uh, solar farm, at the meantime, the current could be zero. And when the time goes on, uh, probably in the morning, the current is going to be a little bit higher and eventually it goes to decay to another zero to the end of the day. So if I wanted to model such loading changing, I can enter those parameters here. And I say, uh, I can want to make sure the loading is cycled every 24 hours because we, every day we, we probably see the same loading profile for a certain time. So we can click OK and then run the calculation for the transient temperature calc. After we've done that, when we wanted to check the pod and the pod, the report and pod for this cable, for example, I wanted to check the cable two. Click OK, we can save the pod for this cable two. We can easily see that this is a midnight, so the temperatures are about 79 degree and gradually increase. And eventually about 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., it will reach its to peak, which is 86 degrees. And then it goes down and decay one more time. And eventually about another mid time, we're gonna see a zero, uh, zero uh, current and the temperature will decay to about 79 degrees again. So this pattern is also uh, repeated one day by one day. So this is basically how we uh, show the uh, transient profile and the transient calculation. And uh, if you want, you can also generate a report for this case. Uh, it has provide a very um, handy report format. So you can just show those reports to your client or your user. Uh, it will include all the major information like the input, uh, how many conduit I have, how many cables I have, and what would be the cable sightings and what would be the dimension of the race phase, something like that. Besides those uh, basic function or most important function, it have also provides several additional features to be used. For example, uh, if you go to the editor mode, we can simply see the annotations for all those elements. We can see that for the raceway, I have the annotation from the arc direction and also for the y directions. And I can also see the uh, edge to edge, uh, center, cent center to center, edge to edge distance between individual conduit and between uh, conduit to the external source. Another thing I want to mention that in some cases, you may have a special raceway and a special application. You may run into different multiple raceway at the same time. So in this case, the ETAP can also handle that. You just simply drop in another raceway into the presentation, and then you just follow the same step and repeat all the steps we mentioned before. And when you run the more calculation, the ETAP will automatically consider all adjacent heat effects between each individual conduit and the cables. Besides that, if you have an external heat source like the steam pipe, uh, and you wanted to model the effect of the steam pipe, you can simply drop in a new external heat source here and then you can define its dimensions and what would be the uh, operating temperature for this heat source. After you've done that, when you run the calculation, the effect of the heat source will be automatically included and they will be, uh, all the cables will be affected by this heat source. Thank you for joining this demo. I'm now answering your questions. The first question is, what is the difference between the Nieher Macras method and the IEC 6027 method? Currently, ETAP supports two major methods to do the underground raceway thermal analysis. The first one is the Nieher Macras method. Another one is the IEC 6027 method. This two methods is actually very similar in terms of the calculation method and the calculation assumptions. In most cases, these two methods can generate very similar results. 
However, there is some minor difference between those two. For example, IEC my third calculation assumes the load factor is always 100%, while the Nikkei Micro my third can consider any load factor. Besides that, uh, some input parameters like the thermal resistivity of the cable insulation type could be different. However, in actual design, you can just pick the method which can meet your design requirement or based on your client requirement. The second question I see here is the thermal capacitance considered in the transient calculation. Yes, ETAP does consider the thermal capacitance in the transient calculation. Because the transient calculation is the time-dependent calculation, the existence of the thermal capacitance will cause the nagging effect of the thermal change. So in this case, because of the nagging effect of the temperature change, it is required to include the thermal capacitance in the transient calculation. The third question, can ETAP support to analyze multiple raceways at the same time? Yes, ETAP can calculate multiple raceway, including deck bank or direct raceway system at the same time. Also, mutual effect, mutual thermal effect between raceways, duct banks, and also all cables are all considered at the same time in the same calculation. So the fourth question Will the cable grounding effect uh, affect the thermal calculation? Uh, yes, when the cable conductor carries the load, loading current, the cable current will induce a standing voltage on the metallic armor. When this cable armor is grounded at both ends, the closed loop can form, and also the circulating current can be produced in the armor. In this case, the circulating current can generate a lot of heat and eventually increase the cable temperature. Uh, the next question is, can underground raceway module use the load flow results? Uh, yes. When run the load flow calculation, the cable operating loading can be automatically updated into the cable editor and the loading current of the cable can eventually be used by the underground raceway modules.